What's up tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I hope you like this video. This is your review for The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 13, episode 17. So, and next week is the season finale, so. But we are back at Blaze. The ladies are there. Um, Marlo, Portia is um, ignoring Marlo. Marlo is trying to talk to everybody and she does end up apologizing. She said, listen, I don't know what came over me. When we were down in New Orleans, and I do apologize, you know, I just, I don't even know. I don't know what happened, but I'm sorry. Now, Portia's thing was, girl, you can apologize by staying out of my business. Now, on one hand, I was like, Portia, girl, you're doing too much because, I mean, Marlo did apologize. Y'all are friends. Y'all had a falling out. But then when Portia made the comment about staying out of my business, then I was like, oh, yeah, she is on the You Slept With Bolo train. Okay, well, whatever. So anyway, Portia still ain't really here for it. Marlo is trying her best. She's doing everything in her power to try and make up with Portia. And Portia is just not here for it, okay? Then she turns around and does that same mess at the table that she did with Big Frida. She wants to turn to Candy's aunt and start asking Candy's aunt, well, I mean, what would you do? And Portia was like, girl... Leave me out of this. Like, stop, stop, stop bringing me in this. Stop turning this into a situation that the whole table need to have a conversation about. Just stop. Now, while all of this is going on outside, Kenya done asked the ladies, um, she done asked to talk to Candy. Now, Cynthia showed her ass up. I don't remember nobody asking for Cynthia, but okay. Come to find out, it's Brooklyn's birthday. Mark is in town for Brooklyn's birthday. And Kenya is now confused. She don't know whether he going to stay with her or stay at a hotel. She don't know whether this means that they trying to work on things or what. Like, she's so upset and confused and she don't know what's going on. And Candy is like, girl, why are we still having this conversation? What you still confused about? What you don't understand? What is it that you want? And, of course, Candy is like, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't know what my expectation is. And it's just confused by the whole thing. Girl, listen. You are giving him way too much. How about this? You say when you go to New York, you normally stay at a hotel. Okay, well, that's where he need to be staying. He don't get to stay with you. Candy says, why have you just filed for divorce? Like, I don't understand. And she says, her, and her answer is simple. She said, listen, when I feel like we've done all that we can do, then I'll file for divorce. But I don't think we have. I don't think we've done everything. And so I'm still holding out hope. So at the end of the day... At least for the purposes of the cam of the camera, Kenya still wants to be married to this man. Why? I don't know. It ain't for none of us to know. It is between her and Mark and her Lord because I don't know what you could possibly want from this man. But neither here nor there. Kenya tells Candy that, you know, she really wants to be there to support her, but she really got a lot, you know, her anxiety and there's a lot on her mind. Candy said, girl, you came. And for that, I, I appreciate it. You go ahead and go do what you got to do. Go handle your business. Now, Latoya is not coming because Latoya says she had a stomach ache. Okay. So, they had the whole tasting. Everybody said that the food was good. Everything looked good, you know. Um, and again, like I said, um, Marlo tried to turn this into something that it didn't need to be. Um, but she did end up leaving, or, you know, she didn't leave early, but she ended up leaving before dessert. They had dessert, and it was Mama Joyce's birthday, so they bought out a little birthday, you know, um, cake, piece of cake for her. Um, aunt, not aunt, which one? One of the aunts was flirting with Drew's, um, husband, talking about some girl, you better look out. I am saying, you know what, you can have them. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> But it was successful, you know, to look like it, everything was successful. Now, Portia and Cynthia are having their pop-up shop the next day, or in a couple of days from this event. So they asked the ladies, please make sure you're sharing it out there, you know, so that we can, you know, get as many people in the room as possible. Um, and so they had it down to the wine cellar. Cynthia said, listen, the everybody's businesses took a hit during COVID. She said, luckily for me, I've been able to, keep my head above water, but I know a lot of small businesses, especially black-owned businesses, have not. And so I wanted to have this event. So, of course, everybody shows up. Um, I didn't realize that Drew had 
she got something with sleep music for the baby or something. I don't know, child. Um, Portia was there selling her sheets, honey. Um, of course, um, somebody else was there. Kenya Moore had a table there selling her hair care products, honey. So everybody was there. And then, of course, they had other, you know, black businesses. And, and the ladies came through. All of them had on their masks. So it was kind of hard to even know who you who was who. But they were all in there. Now, a couple of things go down before we get to the christening. I mean, before we get to the event. I'm sorry. I got a little ahead of myself. Kenya is having a breast reduction. She said that after the baby... You know, a lot of women breasts get bigger after the baby, but she said her breasts just didn't go nowhere, and they lopsided. So she is having some augmentation done. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Do what you gotta do, Kenya. Do what you gotta do, baby. Um, Drew and her husband, they working out all that good stuff. They're supposed to have a christening for their youngest daughter. Now listen, let me give y'all the short version of this story because I ain't about to drag this whole thing out. Okay, make a long story short. Drew says that they can't have pastor, um, 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 not pastor, he ain't a pastor, he's a, um, oh shoot, what they call that man? Prophet. Prophet Lot was supposed to do the, the, the christening for their baby, who's really not a baby, the baby too, the baby running around, it ain't a baby, but that's okay. Now, her husband is a little confused as to why the man can't do the christening. He's like, did he, did he, did he? Cancel on us. I mean, why can't he do it? So Drew goes to explain why he can't do it. Drew says, listen. Here's what had happened. The night of the niece's party, a whole lot of stuff went down in that car ride from the niece's party from, from uh, Shamia's house to the Toya's house. A whole lot went down. But anyway, what we found out is the assistant that had invited Toya to church Introduced Toya to Prophet Lot. In the interim, Latoya and Prophet Lot then got close. Close. Real close. She getting hotel rooms for him. They have a dinner and breakfast together. You know, dinner, breakfast. And that Pastor Lot, Prophet Lot, he just had a baby and a whole fiance. And she messing up happy homes. Now, listen, let me say this. And I'm not here to judge. But what I am here to say is if you calling yourself a man of God, you're not supposed to have a newborn and a, a, a fiance. You're supposed to have a wife and a newborn. So I'm already like, okay. Now, she's saying that, you know, and then she's like, and Latoya is still married. And so I just don't want the blessing of my child to be marred by all of this drama, right? It's a whole lot going on here. I don't want no parts of it. He just need to sit over there. We're going to have to find somebody else to bless the baby. Listen, I can respect that. And if Drew had left it right there, I wouldn't have even been mad at Drew. Because I can respect that. If you feel like the man that you, you know, she said he's been a friend of theirs for a long time. He's been a family friend. And she's just really disappointed. But here's my a couple of problems I have. One, she's blaming everything on Latoya. At the end of the day, it takes two to tango. And if he's the man of God, and Candy said all of this later on, but I was thinking it before Candy even said it. If he's the man of God, isn't the biggest, the bigger responsibility on him? Whatever. So we, so, okay, fast forward. So now we back to the small business situation. Drew is going around the room telling everybody this story about Toya and Pat Profit Lot and how Toya is breaking up happy homes, right? Anybody who listens, she done told Candy, she done told Cynthia, she done told uh, Portia, she done told Shamir, she done told anybody who will listen, okay? So Toya gets there and <laughs> Candy messy ass talking about some. So I hear you got a new boyfriend. <laughs> and Drew even said that's why Toya didn't come to Candy's tasting. Because she knew that Drew had found out what was going on and she got embarrassed by it. Toy is a lot of things, but easily embarrassed is not one of them. I don't think that would have been a reason why she wouldn't come, but whatever. So Cynthia gets all the ladies into the wine cellar so they could talk or whatever. And it comes up, right? This whole thing comes up. 
And Candy said what I just said. Candy was like, why are you putting all this on Toya, though? Like, don't get me wrong. Y'all know Toya ain't been my most favorite person in the world, but why are you putting all this on Latoya? Because if this is the man of God, and what Toya said is, I went to him for spiritual for spiritual healing. The reason why I wasn't drinking in New Orleans is because I he had some sort of two-week program that she was doing with him, and she was doing a cleansing and the fasting and all that good stuff or whatever, and that that's what she was coming to him for now according to cynthia toya told her she got herself a new man who's from texas prophet lot is from texas so it does sound like it might have been a little something something and this and this and that and that going on but even if it's true one drew it ain't your business and it damn sure ain't your business to be telling everybody who will listen that's number one and number two why are you putting all of it on Toya like it don't take two to tango? Like this man is some helpless, meek, and mild person that Toya just jumped on and took all of his goodies. Like, I don't understand that. I don't understand it. So Toya ends up leaving up out of there because, of course, she's pissed off, probably a little embarrassed at everything else. So Kenya has her her surgery she invites the ladies over to come and talk to her or whatever and she lets the ladies know um that mark is in town and that they did have a good talk and that they kind of had some things you know that they still trying to figure some things out but things are kind of looking back like they might be going in the right direction i don't know <laughs> then they get to talking about what happened down to uh the thing with the christening, with the blessing for the baby. And Toya tells them her side of the story. And Toya says, first of all, I'm not messing with that man. I'm not, you know, I don't have nothing to do with Prophet Lot and his situation. I didn't do nothing. You know, we are not sleeping together. We are not dating. He was giving me spiritual advise advisement. And she even calls him on the phone, right? Now, oh, Marlo was there. That's the first time Marlo has been to more mad because you know her and Marlo ain't been rocking together. And I didn't realize that that's where the whole beef between her and Marlo even started was because she wasn't invited to the housewoman when Kenya had her housewoman. Remember that housewoman that they, that Kenya wasn't ready to have because it ain't had no air conditioning and shit was still not finished? Girl, you wasn't mad about that. Was you really mad about that? Anyway. So, that's what they're there for. Now, Latoya ends up calling the man on FaceTime and he sets the whole record straight. He said, first of all, they did say something to me about doing the spiritual, I mean, doing the christening for the baby, but they never got back to me with a date, a time. So I didn't even know I was still supposed to be doing it. Number two, no, I am not sleeping with Toya. There is nothing going on between us. I was spiritually advising her. Three, I am not engaged. I ain't been engaged for three years. So she not breaking up no happy homes. Even So here's the thing. I say all that to say, even if everything that Drew said as far as Latoya sleeping with this man is true, it doesn't sound like it's as deep as you tried to make it out to be, Drew. The fact that the man didn't even have a date and time of when the christening was supposed to take place. The fact that his engagement ended three years ago. Maybe y'all not as close as y'all think y'all are if you thought this man was still engaged that he wasn't even engaged to this woman. Um... Number three, Toya said that it was spiritual advisement. And even if that spiritual advisement included a trip down to the Marriott on the 15th floor in a private suite, it is not your business, Drew. And I really feel like you put 20 on 10. I really feel like you put 20 on 10. You've been coming for that woman ever since. You know, I don't know. Like I said, that trip from Shamia's house when she was drunk... I feel like you call yourself doing a good deed for her and you turned it into a whole nother situation that is not appropriate. Anyway, that's what it was, y'all. The season finale is next week. We will see what they talking about there. Talk to y'all later. Peace.